is up, Fight Fans, and welcome to this edition of the ongoing series, The Coronavirus Chronicles. My guest this time is a top talent in the Bellator lightweight division, and is unfortunately one of the many fighters from the promotion's three planned events in May that are all now postponed due to the coronavirus concerns in different parts of the world. In, in MMA, he is known as the bomb. But you can call him Mr. Piccolotti, Adam maybe, or simply Adam Piccolotti. Adam, my man, thanks for the time to talk <laughs> yeah. the latest in this crazy world we're all now living in. Hey, man, you know what? Uh, it's always a pleasure to talk to you, and we definitely have the time so so <laughs> yeah. glad to be here too much time <laughs> too much especially with the kids out of school it's too much time <laughs> yeah man I, I i feel for all the parents and all all those people out there you know <laughs> now what was because i have so many questions for you about what happened with the you know you were going to be on the may 9th event one of the three i talked to cal eleanor a few weeks ago before it even became official and his event you know has now been postponed to in, in london what was the last couple of weeks like for you in terms of if this fight would happen because we are still so far away we just got into april your fight was in may yeah. but this pandemic situation has projections that could that us may be getting on the better side of this could be eight weeks could be 12 weeks could be even more when i when i talked to cal who was set to fight in that london card you know he didn't have a great deal of confidence about it happening with your event earlier than his about a week or so before did you have confidence it would go through or the situation around the world as it continues to seem to get worse and change and evolve were you kind of getting like a pessimistic you know mood about it and not feeling it was going to happen just start wondering okay when am i going to be rescheduled then yeah that's i mean you basically nailed it it was, it was it's a hard situation to put any fighters mm -hmm. in um the unknown right mm -hmm. so like for me it wasn't that big of a change you know uh, i think for most fighters this whole uh shelter in place hasn't been that big of a change just because we don't go do nine to fives like yeah. most people do you know um but having events cancel like this so it's it's really big you know and um, I think it's pretty pretty obvious to to some, but maybe not to all. You know, us pro fighters, we don't get paid like NFL, NBA players. Yep. Um, so every single fight is really important um, for our bank accounts and for our future. And you know, the the amount of time in the sport is so limited. So so now all of a sudden, in 2020, I was hoping to get four fights in. You know, I'll be lucky to get two fights with the state of it now. Um, who knows? Like as you said, how long it's going to even continue to be. Um, so it's it's a super bummer. It's a really uh, hard situation for everybody in the world. Um, I've been trying my best to just count my blessings and and to realize like, look, even though even though uh, my paycheck's gonna get pushed back, um, you know this and that. Like, I personally I don't have any kids with my girl yet. Um, so that that was one situation that makes it a lot easier on us, right? Our rent is is doable. Like we got all of our bases covered. So. You know we're healthy, so like there's there's always positives, there's always pros. Um, I feel I feel more for everybody else out there. That's that's you know really getting the shaft called small business owners and stuff like that. It's it's brutal. Um, but as far as like staying ready for that fight and 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 the, my mindset before it got postponed, well, it was like I've been so hungry to fight this entire year. I was trying to get on that Thackerville card. I was trying to get on that Connecticut mm -hmm. card. Like I've been really really hungry to fight, and um, and so to me it was like. The if 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 this pandemic would have kind of not turned into a pandemic, right, and been like three weeks of shelter at home or something like that, two weeks, kind of like what we initially thought, I would have been fine, you know. And I, I kind of had that in my mind, like, okay, we're like seven weeks out at that point. Just you know, stay active, keep running, keep hitting some mids, keep you know, do do what we can. And then you know, if everything went the way it was planned, five weeks out, uh, we would have been you know, kind of released back into the gyms, and 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 that would have been plenty of time. Um, so I was never really too stressed, you know, I was actually, again, kind of, uh, kind of lucky that the timing of my fight w is what it was, right? Like, um, those fights that were in April that people were thinking are still happening, like, those were, I feel bad for the, all those yeah. fighters out there, like the leaves and stuff, because, I mean, the, 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 the promotion was stringing along so hard. Um, obviously, I've been hungry as hell to fight, but I was almost just kind of waiting for the, for the announcement, you know, I kind of had a, a feeling that it was going to happen. And then especially as, as this pandemic hasn't been, um, you know, resolving as quickly as, as some people would expect or, or, or think, um, you know, I was just kind of waiting for that time to, 
the, the call to come, you know, and it came. <laughs> and, and I'm glad you brought up, you know, trading and stuff like that because it, is there a part of you that in the end, especially since it got, it was postponed well in advance compared to, say, the Connecticut guys on that card that they, it was day of, they finally got stopped. Uh, is there part of you that's kind of glad it happened like that? Is there part of you that's a relief because the gyms are closed everywhere, you know, and most of the country, most of the world. So I, when I was talking to Cal, Eleanor, he was talking about he was doing push-ups on a tree after doing a long walk to try to stay in shape and stuff like that. Is it almost a relief? Because obviously this is not an optimal way to have been going throughout a fight camp and then into a fight, weight cutting in a different way than, you know, I'm, with high-level professional athletes, it's all about those routines and all those things they're used to. You know, in a way, is there a relief? You know, who wants yeah. to go into a fight training like this? Yeah, absolutely. Like I said, like, when it comes down to it, like, not having the wrestling days, not having the sparring days, like, those things are really important. Mm -hmm. And, and um, not just, like, the skills that you've acquired over the years, but what you put in your body muscle memory-wise mm -hmm. for, like, the weeks leading up to an mm -hmm. event, it's, it's, it's a big factor. It plays a big part. You know, people really perform the way they practice obviously all those all those sayings are there for a reason um as far as like being worried about it like i'm i'm at a place where it's like i'm 31 man um i'm so established in this sport i'm so ready to to get my belt i feel that my skill level is has easily reached the point where it needs to be and all comes down to is me showing up um mentally and physically you know being being in great shape and being you know mentally ready yeah. for whatever fight comes so for me, I was like, at this point, I was really happy with my matchup. I still am. Um, I still want to fight this dude. But um, to me, it was like, just get in great shape, and I'll be, I'll be fine. Um, and obviously, that's it's not ideal. It's not. Um, it's it's way more ideal to have the proper training through a full camp. So, you know, it is what it is. It's better for the fans in the long run because you're not going to get some fights where we're both getting tired because you didn't get those yes. hard sparring rounds in. You're not going to get the sloppy exchanges, you know. Um, so... It, you know, again, like I said, my timing kind of worked out pretty well um, to where, you know, being six weeks out of a fight, some people start a camp at six weeks. So it's not like I was like dieting extremely hard. I wasn't like really focusing on getting my weight down and um, it. I just kind of had to pull up, you know, that's all. What was it? it of course, and I've been asking every fighter that's been hit, hit by this in different ways. What is the financial hit for you? Is there any, you know, you mentioned it now, you know, that you, yeah, you're expecting that payday and stuff like that. Do you, because so many fighters in the sport um, have side jobs. You know, a lot of them are trainers in the gyms they train out of. And, and that's tough for a lot of fighters right now, too, because the gyms are closed. So they can't even do that for the extra cash. Is is fighting your primary source of revenue and and, and, and uh, financial security? Do you think do things on the side and that's been affected by everything going on? Or, or, or did you have you, you know, because you, like you said, you've been around a long time now. Have you set yourself up and, and put your money away invest in the right way that you know you can be a fighter but this isn't necessarily a bad hit if you're out for a while first of all i'd like to say no <laughs> <laughs> i wasn't i wasn't intelligent and i wasn't prepared <laughs> to start making money um you know what to be honest with you that's something that i do want to get into in the future here maybe after my career is helping um young fighters understand what to do when they start to receive these big checks um i i was a big victim of the irs and the u.s government and i didn't know how to play the game and i got really screwed for mm. it um i had wish i had hooked up with somebody a lot smarter in the tax department a long time ago um so basically to this point it's been you know catch up making some money you know nothing nothing smart nothing saved um my my day-to-day -day revenue and, and that's another thing i just signed a new contract so this was supposed to be like uh the first fight on the rest of my life type of type of deal so um, <laughs> It's okay. It's just it's just a speed yeah. bump. But um, in terms of the day to day, yeah, man, I teach private lessons. I teach uh, classes. I'm always in the gym. It's like these are the things that uh, not only help me make money day to day, you know, like the the gas money, the food money, um, but it, it helps keep my sanity, which everybody is fighting with, um, obviously. So yeah, man, it's it's absolutely affecting my day in and day out. Um, there's certain things that I absolutely love about it, like I get to spend all this time with my dogs, with my girlfriend. Um, we've done a, a, a bunch of stuff at the house, you know, like renovating and making stuff nice. I've been doing projects. I feel like a carpenter lately, <laughs> you know. Um, so there's, you know, there's glass half full stuff to look at too. Um, yeah, financially, I think that's where everybody's taking the big hit. Um, good news being that uh, because you're staying at home, you're probably not spending as much. Yeah. Um, if you're being smart with your food, uh, that's basically it. Don't order too much crap online and you should be cool. 
Um, also, they're supposed to be coming up with some sort of um, relief for independent contractors, mm-hmm. which is us as fighters. So I'm really, I think that's next week, if I believe, uh, if, if I heard right. So I'm definitely going to be looking into that and trying to take advantage of all the help that they can give us. You know, um, independent contractors, we're kind of on our mm-hmm. own. Uh, right. No unemployment and, and things like that. So it's 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 definitely hard on the pocketbook. Um, but to postpone to the fight is it, that's really the big one for me. What has the communication been like with you and your management and Bellator since, especially since they they postponed that event in Connecticut and, and this has been an ongoing problem for everybody around the world? Have you heard from them and were told they were expecting the May events to still go forward, or or is it was it kind of a radio silence? And when that press release went out about the events being postponed. That, that was also the same time you found out. Yeah, that, and that's more so how it is. Um, I actually heard from my manager who gave me a call. Um, he, he's always in contact with Scott and all those guys. But, um, you know, I didn't expect to hear from them first because they don't know what the hell they're doing either. <laughs> Nobody does, right? Everybody's just up in the air like, oh, it's, you hear some people, this is going to last one week tops. Then you hear some people, it's going to last for a year. It's like nobody knows. Um, we're trying to follow the experts the best we can, but it's really not like uh, it's not like somebody's got the inside source. You know what I mean? So um, I don't expect much out of Bellator. I expect basically for them to do what they've been doing. You know, they I think they're pretty responsible in canceling the cards early enough. Um, they paid out paid out those fighters, as a lot of you guys mm-hmm. know, um, from that Connecticut card, which was canceled on the same day. Um, makes me even more upset I wasn't on the card. <laughs> um, <laughs> But, uh, yeah, you know, you can't expect anything from the guys. I just expect them not to do what uh, the UFC is doing and, and try to drag it on for these fighters and make these fighters try to stress and stay in camp. Like, if I was still trying to stay in camp like those four weeks out right now, I'd be I'd be miserable. I'd be angry. I'd be I'd be uh, upset and feeling like I'm not getting what I need. You know, and even though everybody else is in the same boat, it's still going to – that those emotions are still going to override, you know. So uh, I, I've been really happy with Bellator as always. I- they're, they're solid. And I'm glad you brought up the fighters getting paid in the Connecticut card because MMA can be a harsh sport when it comes to, to payments for fighters. But we, you know, we've gotten that report about Bellator paying guys. Um, supposedly UFC gave some compensation to the folks, the guys fighting in London, the girls fighting in London. Were you surprised that stuff happened? Because even in recent weeks, even in recent months, if Fowdy's bouts were canceled last minute for whatever reason, getting paid and getting something for that was pretty inconsistent. Some places did it sometimes, some places did it, didn't do it other times. Was part of you as a fighter or in this sport for a long time, when you heard that, you're like, damn, I mean, that's good to hear, but I didn't expect that to happen. A hundred percent, you know, <laughs> you never know because this is the thing, this is the thing about drug testing and, and basically everything in our sport is nobody really has to do anything that they don't want to do from the promotion standpoint. You know, Dana didn't have to bring in USADA, you know, mm-hmm. like we, there's like a minimum that these promoters got to cover. And then it's kind of like whatever they decided to do. So, um, Bellator paying their guys off from that Connecticut card. Like they didn't have to do that. They, they were, there was no obligations to them. Um, however, it was the right thing, mm-hmm. you know? So, um, once again, Bellator doing the right thing, not surprising me, you know, it, to hear that. I didn't even know about UFC pay in London. That really surprises me. Um, they may be trying to just catch up with a good clout that Bellator got, you know. Um, but, yeah, it, it, it sucks because I knew it was a one-off. You know, I knew they were only paying out that card, which is, uh, accept, you know, that's understandable. Yeah. Like, they can't be paying out all their fighters for the next three months just from nothing. Um, so I, I kind of understand that part. Um but Bellator, it's Bellator being Bellator, you know what I mean? And I love it. That's why I fight for him. And, and it's interesting, too, because and I'm and going to the idea of postponing, you know, losing out on a fight like that. From what I could tell in your career, at least six times in Bellator, you've had fights postponed. Where does this kind of a situation rank in terms of the difficult situation that is losing a fight when you expect it? Is, in terms in terms of dealing with this kind of thing, is this the best way, personally, you'd prefer a month away, you can stop camp, you can stop paying for camp, you can maybe change alter plans, or do you kind of maybe on the, on the other side, like a lot of fighters that really are liking UFC, pushing hard and trying to get it into the last moment and, and, and try to make it happen, but in the end, you're kind of unsure if it happens or not. You could very well be let down the last minute like the Connecticut guys what would you prefer in a tough spot like this well in advance or at least try it as hard as you can for the promotion to make it happen yeah you know it's it's hard to say but especially being I'm I'm 31 now you know so it's like I'm starting to feel things and I'm starting to understand things and it's like the man the what we put ourselves through for each training camp is so fucking rough you know it's like we're 
We're we're killing our so- our Man. bodies. We're we're wringing out our adrenal glands. We're fucking. You know, it's like it's a hard hard grind. And I'm definitely in that camp where it's like if there's not if there's a possibility if that possibility is ten percent that that fight would have happened in May, like I'll be training my ass mm. off still. Like I'm not saying that uh, you should coast and see what happens, but that's why and i think that's i'm very professional with with my preparation i think that's why i kind of did prefer like this five week out just like postpone it and let me know when it's going to be for sure like uh that's i think the way to go i think um kind of waiting and making these fighters wait to the last second to know like and like i mentioned earlier even if it does go through like you're probably not going to get the absolute performance that you're that you know the best that each fighter could give um so i think the i think a the, the uh, more notice, the better, but it's that double-edged sword because you never know. You wouldn't want them to cancel the card and then, you know, this thing clear up, but then then be like, oh, no, it's back on. Like, that wouldn't work either. Um, so uh, I think I think the way it worked out for me was, was kind of ideal for this bad situation. I like that, that the fact that you look like you're 22, but give that, oh, I'm 31, rugged, I'm just feeling it. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's that MMA fighter, been in a long time, like you look twenty one, act and, and compete in twenty like you're twenty six, but you feel it from all these years and training and all this stuff like that. That's what I love about MMA fighters. But another, uh, I you know talking again about maybe relieved it got canceled or postponed in advance and all this stuff like that is the we are the situation with the virus and the information we know on it is always changing. I mean, like three weeks ago we were just talking about. Oh, it's really just affecting the elderly, and it's just pre-existing people and stuff like that. Kids are they're fine, whatever. That's not the case anymore, and we're finding out now, especially last week, asymptomatic people that have it have no idea they have it, and now just breathing and talking to people around them it could be a way to spread and stuff like that. Now, and and younger people can get it, you know, get pneumonia, be in a really bad place, stuff like that. In another way, have has it been in the back of your mind at all? As we continue to get more information, learn about how dangerous it can be. When you were training, you know, up until the last time you were training at the gym or training on your own, and, and, and is there that relief? Like, you know what? Better off. I don't want to take the chance of maybe, even though I don't hope, hope for it, uh, I'm training with someone because I got to get in some kind of sparring or something like that on some level. If I'm about to go into a fight, you know, training with someone that might have it. Maybe I have it. I'm giving it to somebody. You know, is, do you, is that another part of the relief? Like, you know what? Hearing all these things, yeah, let me just stop training and just be better off for everybody. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, we're talking about relief from the fight, from, you know, oh, five weeks out and preparation and this and that. Like, I'm thinking from a very fighter's point of view, but yeah, absolutely I'm relieved. I'm relieved that, uh, uh, you know, we don't have to risk our health because, you know, a lot of people are like, oh, I'm not scared, it's another flu. And it's like, okay, you know, I don't really know. That's, that's what it comes down to. I don't really know. And if there's a lot of people out there that are professionals that study this stuff and they do know, like, I'm just going to play it on the safe side and, and to not have to risk things because I'm about to go fight another trained mm-hmm. fighter in, in so many weeks. Um, it's, it's better because you're absolutely right. I would be risking it. And, and the guy I'm going to fight would be risking mm-hmm. it. And everybody on that card would be risking it. And then everybody would be mingling. It's, you know, it's, um, that's against what they say is a good thing to do, <laughs> you <laughs> yes. know? And as much as frustration is, I may feel or some of us out there may feel with uh, not being able to go to work, not be able to go to the beach and do whatever you want to do, not just like live our regular lives. So as, as much frustration as we may feel, um, we are, I mean, I'm speaking for the majority of us. We're not scientists. We're not, you know, we don't, we're not experts in this field. Like that dude can't come up to me and tell me how to do an arm bar. I'm not going to go up to him and tell him what a dangerous virus yeah. is and what isn't. Um, that's the truth of the matters. I don't really know. I've felt the frustration over these weeks, as everybody has. Um, but, yeah, I'm just going to listen to them uh, and, and stay safe. And that that really is important with the uh, not preparing for a fight because you're absolutely right. We would have all thrown caution to the wind and been training full. So. What's the situation for you at home in California? I mean, I'm in the thick of it here in New York City where it's, it's really, you know, getting crazy. But for you, are where you're at specifically, is there, are you under a stay-at-home mandate? Have you been home for the most part for a couple of weeks now, not going on too much? What are you doing aside from, you know, you were training up so recently to keep yourself busy and keep your, your mental health strong and, and, and stay sane? You know, what's it been like for you at home the last couple of weeks? Yeah, um... It's been 
we're in, we're in California, right? I'm in a little town called Half Moon Bay, if you guys don't know. So it's north of San Jose and it's south of San Francisco. Mm. And those two, uh, Santa Clara Valley and uh, San Francisco, are two of the hotbeds that are here in California. Um, I think we're a little bit behind you guys in New York, but there are still definitely uh, a good amount of cases here compared to some places in the country. Um, so, I mean, it is what it is. You know, like I said before, I'm trying to follow orders the best I can, just kind of like staying home, staying active at home. Um, the thing is I'm surrounded by a bunch of this amazing, uh, scenery between the beach and the mountains mm. and stuff like that. And, uh, we've been on lockdown, I think the longest or, or the stay at home, whatever you want to call it. And, and uh, initially we were staying at home and people from all the other cities were coming in and going to the beach. And it was actually more crowded here than like, even during the uh. summer months, just because nobody was working. Yeah. Yeah, so so we're stuck, you know, between a rock and a hard place where you can't leave, but everybody else is coming into yeah. you, and you know it was it was a kind of a gross situation, but um, they've gone through and they've like, you know, they're taking it more seriously now. All the parking lots are closed off, all the turnouts are closed off. Um, I even heard about you know cops ticketing people in the residentials mm. that you know have have license plate registered somewhere else, stuff like that. So. Um, because all that's cleared up, it allows me to go to my local areas more. So that's what I've been doing. I've been walking the dogs. We've been going on runs. Um, just because we're not fighting, you know, I'm still going to stay active, um, doing like home workouts, stuff like is that. Is there a part of you when these people are showing up? Because even myself, I've noticed here and how bad it is here, too many people out and it annoys me in a way. Is there part of you that's like considering that that area was a hotbed and you're like, get the fuck out of here. Why are you people here? Get out of here. <laughs> Damn it, people are stupid. Is there a part of you that was like that? Oh, yeah, 100%. <laughs> and uh, the culture of the town I grew up in, you know, we're, we're on the coast, right? It's a small one-row town, um, two ways to get in, two ways wow. to get out. And so there's always been, like, a local presence, you know, that happens many times with small surf towns especially. So there's always been this locals-only thing. Um, which I've always been kind of like, you guys are, you guys are lame, you know, it's like, <laughs> do you never go on, do you never go on vacation? Yeah. Like, do you never want to go anywhere else? Like, you know, so there's always been like this underkind theme and, and, and feeling here in the town. Um, but now that it's like mandated, mm. like I'll tell you what, all the, the locals are freaking <laughs> loving it. <laughs> I feel that frustration, uh, every day though. Like I said, we're in a little tourist mm. town here on the coast and, and one way in one way out basically on either side of it and so during months like christmas tree months there's a bunch of christmas tree farms out here a million idiots coming to town <laughs> during during summaries you know nice weather a bunch of idiots coming to town um and uh it is what it is you know so i, I kind of deal with that on the regular so i'm pretty i could just i could just picture you and the girlfriend in the morning having some breakfast having a little coffee like oh fucking idiots are here again here we go it's starting again. <laughs> yeah, yeah, not a, not a great conversation. So now, weird. we talked about it a little bit. Um, you mentioned in terms of what the UFC do, but I wanted to get your thoughts on the situation, how the sport and promotions have handled the whole thing in general. You know, Bellator uh, postponed the, the Connecticut show like we talked about on the day of. Uh, one has done empty arena, then they postpone. Now they kind of plan to do empty arena again starting at the end of the month. KSW, LFA, Combate, all this all postponed for the foreseeable future. And then the UFC doing empty arena, then they postpone. Now they're going to try to get this through with 249. What do you feel as a fighter? Because you know a fighter that's on, on that card with 249. You know, what's the best way to do it? For the, for the promotion to, to try their hardest or, or is this a bad look? Do you feel even as a fighter, and you know a fighter's perspective, is this a bad look, kind of thumbing your nose at what state, local, and federal governments are saying probably not to do? Yeah, I think I think it's a really bad look, and I think it's really unfair. Like we were talk, touching on this whole conversation, is it's unfair for the fighters. Yeah. You know, you, you're keeping these guys like you guys got to stay ready. You guys got to stay ready. Well, that's coming from some dude up top that's never got ready for a fight in his life. It's like. Staying ready for a fight is no fucking mm -hmm. joke, dude. Like, you better be sparring. You better be training, especially when we're talking about lightweight world championships over here. Um, so I think it's been massively irresponsible um, to the fighters and also just to the state of affairs. Um, for them to be trying to put it on still, amidst of this, you know, where people are f scared of their for their lives, it's like I understand that. It, like people want entertainment entertainment's a good way to kind of like distract from bad scary things like this but um but if it can be done in a way that's not gonna perpetuate this this virus which is what you know that would be doing um assuming that 
it is everything that they say it is, you know, you can't have a venue and these empty venues. It's like, people don't think or realize like how many people do you need at a venue minimum, right? There's camera crews. If we're talking about pay-per-view, that's a bigger crew. We need ambulance. You need commissions. You need corners. You need referees. You need judges. So it's like, even if they're talking about a no audience event, they're still going to be bending rules, you know, or, or playing it real freaking close and just kind of throwing caution to the wind. And for what, for what, just, just reschedule it and make everybody and their mother look forward to June or July or whenever this is coming going to happen. Because I wouldn't be surprised if not only we're going to get to get an amazing card from Bellator and UFC each week, but we're also going to get maybe even like a card midweek yeah. because there's going to be so many fighters that need a fight that want to fight and UFC and Bellator are going to have to catch up also on their end, you know, with their bottom line, with their budget, they got to make their money back too. So it's going to be like the most amazing summer uh, the MMA has ever seen. So just postpone, just wait for that and make your event with these amazing fighters, the biggest draw that you possibly mm -hmm. can for that time period. That's, that's my take. That's my two cents. I'm sure like uh, uh, casual fans might kind of hate on that, but that's, that's the opinion of a fighter, you know, because, um, because like I've touched on many times, getting hard and or getting ready and staying ready is a hard thing to do. And I'm, I'm glad you brought it up. I have one other question, but it came to mind now. Um, because, like I mentioned, you know, you train with a first person in, on, on 249. You train with Habib often, uh, a.k.a. And I did uh, kind of like a, a video version of my mailbag column. just, And I wanted to bring up the, con the, the, the topic of the weird fan hate he's gotten for pulling out of this fight. Understand me. So to the point where people are throwing around stripped of the title, which is fucking nonsense. Like, like yeah. you train Come with him, on. know him, know what he goes to, know him better than any of these fools as a person. Like, what are your thoughts on that kind of stuff? Look, this dude is undefeated. I don't even know his record anymore. 28, 27. <laughs> I don't know. I, you can't even keep track of this guy anymore. You think he's scared? You think Khabib is scared of anybody in his lightweight division that's going to make him pull out of a fight? Like, come on, man. You guys are you guys are way off. You know you're way off. You're you're making a, a all these. This goes out to all you people who think that Khabib is pulling out and running. I I hate that they even say that could be pulled out. Khabib didn't pull out. The government pulled mm -hmm. us out. You know who? Put yourself in his shoes. Go train in Dagestan, okay? And then be in the midst of this pandemic or epidemic, and then say that you could maybe fight with a really small possibility but if you were to stay you're going to get stuck in dagestan do you want to be stuck in dagestan away from your family friends or even people that really speak the same language no if you're going to get quarantined you want to be near your home you want to be home man like that's everybody especially when the shit's not going to happen so for him to return home and follow follow the orders of what the rest of the world is doing it's not him pulling out you guys it's him being responsible. It's him looking out for himself, his family, and, and honestly being responsible with this virus. He owes nothing to y'all, and he's going to go out there, and he's going to fight and, and, and I think beat the crap out of Tony Ferguson whenever that happens. But um, he's not scared. He's not pulling out. It is what it is. It's the situation. And, and again, I don't even blame the fans because – or the fans, I should say, clarify that are, that are you know saying that could be pulled out. Again, I blame Dana and the, and the brass. You know, they, they're they putting Khabib in this position. They should realistically have put a postpone on this card, like I said, postpone. And I know it's the, you know, fifth time or whatever <laughs> that, you know, people love to make sure we remember all the, the previous times. But those don't matter. It's, you know, let's worry about the present. Um, postpone it. Set it up. Allow Khabib to go home to his family and make sure that he's there when this when the whole world shuts down, not one state, the whole world, and and, and go from there. It's it's crazy. It's infuriating. It's frustrating, but it's not surprising. <laughs> now, last question, because we talked about things like entertainment. You mentioned it, and and that's kind of what we're kind of trying to do all at home, entertain ourselves when we're not trying to you know deal with other personal responsibilities you showed me before we started the conversation the the the, the game man cave you live in right you you're in right now with all these fun toys stuff like that so what are some of the things you've been doing like i want to I'm, I'm playing to download uh resident evil 3 remastered i'm going to be busy playing that like right, what video games are you playing now what things are you watching maybe that you didn't get time to watch before like what how are you trying to how are you entertaining yourself during this craziness Yo. Yeah, so obviously there's a lot of shit to watch. Everybody and their mamas watch Tiger oh, yes. King, all that stuff. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
all that stuff is good, uh, good solid entertainment. It's good to be reminded on how how dumb yes. some people actually are in this world. <laughs> that's always that's always fun. Uh, me and my girl been catching up on Ozark. Yes. What do you think? One. I that's thought good. season three was very was good, but not as good as the last two. That's what I've been hearing. I'm only on season okay. one still. Like we literally like just started it. We're like halfway through, maybe towards the end of season one. Um, but that was one that's gotten yeah. a lot of hype, great and show. I actually am really enjoying it. Yeah, great show so far. Uh, then uh, behind me is my setup, right? It's my 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 desktop, and that's where I spend most of my game time. And uh, I play World of Warcraft. Do you do Twitch? Are you live streaming your gaming? I'm not okay. live streaming my gaming. Um, it's something I've always been interested mm -hmm. in. Um, I'm kind of just at a weird, I guess, a weird category of a gamer. I'm in between casual and hardcore. You yeah. know what I mean? So I feel I feel a little bit awkward uh, uh, maybe streaming. But, you know, if I got the right crew of people, I think it would be fun mm -hmm. as hell. That's what I've been really looking for. Um, so if any of you guys out there play <laughs> World of Warcraft, hit, hit, hit me up for real. I'll play with you guys, like, every night, uh, 10 p.m. on Pacific time. But, yeah, just hit me on my IG or whatever, and, and, and we'll get mm -hmm. going. Um that you know, I've I've tried to get into some other games, and I do. I'm a gamer at heart, but I I always fall back to Warcraft. So, it is what it is. <laughs>